Eagle Eagle Gardens Eagle Gardens one on Instagram, and this is fucking talk shit with Eagle episode eight oh three, having a returning favorite for us tonight. Of course, you have Eagle, seen this Eagle guy Gardens. on many episodes. Our uh, friend Joe Pietri, how are you doing, hey, my I'm friend? Here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. I'm putting on one of my gold crown t-shirts i don't know if people are watching the video or not but if they are it's on there i'm doing good i've i've been offered a job overseas so i'm probably going to be go moving my seed bank overseas and moving overseas to thailand so i uh next year by by by, by the fall i hope to be moved to thailand I'm putting. I'm going to put up my house for sale and 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 move on. You know, I did a show in in Boston. Normally, when I do a show in Boston, by the second day, I've already three times my investment, right? So it just cost me like six thousand bucks to do a show in Boston, and so by normally by Saturday, it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday show. By Saturday, I've got close to twenty grand. Uh, 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 and do better, do better for than twenty grand for the three day show, uh, two and a half day show. Uh, this time I didn't even break even. First of all, in Boston, I know so many people in Boston. At this show, there was only one person that I recognized from the days when they they started doing shows there in Boston. Uh, one, two, uh, they were all new faces, young newbies. You know. Uh, 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 really, uh, no one with any real knowledge there. You know what I mean? Uh, any kind of real, you know. I, I, uh, I, you know. Anyway, it was a, a total disaster as a show, the knee can show, and uh, <clears throat> the market was, uh, you know, everybody was buying, uh, 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 buying the cheap. Sh- the, 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 it was just like. People didn't know what they were buying. They didn't know what they were doing. They they were totally misinformed. And I, I'm sitting there looking at the crowd of two, and that's two buildings, two sides of the building in the Hay Center. It's a huge show. And and I can honestly tell you that more than 90% of the people there didn't know how to grow, but they all were expert growers. So I, it's hard for me to to really relate to people like that. And so that's another reason I'm thinking I, I got offered this great gig uh, uh, overseas and maybe it's time for me to go back overseas. And, you know, I may do I'm doing a show up in uh, Albuquerque. Albuquerque will be a, the first show uh, done by Canacon, the first show in, in, in New Mexico and that Canacon does. And uh, uh, I'm looking forward to having a good show there. And basically, I'm going to try to do as much as I can, uh, uh, do as many shows as I can. But, you know, nowadays, uh, uh, the whole market has changed. Are you there? Hello? 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 Oh, what happened? I'm here. I had to fucking plug in my internet. My Wi-Fi was going goofy on me. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, the scene, the people that are out there on the cannabis scene are all these young people that, that are looking to get in the industry, but they have no knowledge. They have no training. They have no, and they all, they were all uh, 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 taught wrong. So it's, it's really hard to relate to them. And, you know, I, uh, 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 you know, I've created my 12 and one paradigm and hopefully that's going to get, uh, I've changed the way the world grows and hopefully it'll get people to really be growing correctly and not throw, wasting their money at the electric bar at the electric companies. And uh, the, uh, I was in Canacon in, in uh, uh, the last Canacon show I did was well before the COVID Right. And I was there for one day. Was I was doing a great I was having a great show. And uh, Danny Danko was there and he was like, you know, I wrote a book called The 15 Ounce Pound, Big Pharma's Plan to Patent Pot. 
and I I renamed Danny Danko Danny Don't Know, and that really got under his skin. But the truth is, he didn't know when. Well, he's talking about stuff that happened 10, 15 years ago, before he was even in high times. You know what I mean? So for for him to talk about stuff that happened decades before he was he was in he wasn't even in high school. I mean, you know what I mean? And for him to talk. So he got really, really insulting and, uh, you know, uh, uh, he pissed me off and I went and I smacked him. I gave him a shot right in the head and he, he left, uh, 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 the, the, the event. I got thrown out of the event and then the, uh, that week, the event, uh, 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 Joe Kennedy from CandaCon called me up and said, Joe, if that would have been me and he was talking to me like that, I would have smacked him too. You're back in. So they led me back into Canagon. But the only the only event eventful thing that happened at at, uh, at at Nikon show in Boston was that Danny Danko was there. And the guy that I'm working with, Himan, he's a, 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 a part of the group that are re-legalizing marijuana in, in Kathmandu in Nepal. Uh, he mentioned to Danny, oh, I'm here with Joe Pietri. And when, when, when he heard my name, Joe Pietri, he said, oh, man, don't tell him I'm here. Don't tell him I'm here. That guy hates me. And, 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 and I've got to go. i got to go. So he left, he left rather suddenly from the event. And uh, I don't hate Danny Danko. I just, you know, he don't know. <laughs> Danny don't know. He's too young. He wasn't on the scene. And so he should stop talking about stuff that he doesn't know about. That's all like at this point, quadruple hear, hearsay, you know. And so, uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some of the things that I wrote about that have come to pass, you know, uh, 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 are having its effect on 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 the information more information is getting out there and more people are getting tuned in uh, uh than ever before and basically i, I really uh, have to credit 12 and 1 because that opened up its eyes uh, opened up your eyes because when you do 12 and 1 immediately you see the results within 30 days you see the results as far as a happier plant in one day but you do see the results 30 days in your pocketbook with a bigger plant faster. So uh, uh, that eventually it will be the standard for growing in the industry. You know, uh, one of the, you know, the, the, the people complain uh, uh, about the Chinese and the Mexican uh, 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 cartels and the heroin and the, and the what is it fentanyl and all the addiction and you know yeah you know people here are addicted to speed and they're addicted to coke and they're addicted to heroin and they're addicted to all kinds of pills medications and opiates and stuff and so america is like being considered like the you know like the uh the the, the biggest drug problem in the world was america <laughs> so i mean they're getting a lot of bad press but you know, when it comes to China, you know, uh, uh, you know, they, they, the British forced op the opium trade on China. Opium doesn't come from China, and uh, 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 because that was a way for them to get their 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 silver, their their silks, their minerals, or whatever to, to get the natural wealth of China. Because China has always been one of the richest countries. I mean, they've been import uh, exporting silk you know, thousands, hundreds, thousands of years uh, since, since the days of Rome. The Roman empires had had Chinese silks, the Chinese Silk Road. So, you know, uh, 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 so when people talk about that, I say, well, you know, and they talk about Mao. Mao was so bad. He killed millions of people. You got to remember that by 19, by the night, by, by the 19th, uh, 20th century, uh, uh, China had 25 percent opium addicts. Imagine if you had 25% of the population of the United States addicted to opium. I mean, uh, there, you, I, you know, I don't know what the addiction rate is, but I'm sure that it's not 10% or 5% of the people that are addicted in America. I've got to, I got to look that, that up in Google. So, uh, uh, you know, they needed a Mao to come in and probably, you know, 
uh, get to the root of the opium problem. And probably a lot of people had to die of over it, you know. But you know now they don't have they don't have that problem. So they try to blame it all on China. Their per, per, uh, per, precursor uh, 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 material that they all that they supply and all this shit. Man, you, you know, <laughs> you, you get the you get the Sinaloa cartel, but basically run by the CIA since the fifties. You know what I mean? They, they there's a there was a report on on. Uh, Felix Rodriguez. Felix Rodriguez is like the number one Cuban CIA agent. He was the guy that was there that hunt helped the Bolivians catch Che Guevara, and he was there and, and witnessed Che Guevara being executed. And he was part of the Kennedy assassination operation, whatever that turned out to be, blow back in your face. And then he's been like a famous character uh, uh, throughout history, a super fascist, super anti-communist. Uh, uh, he was there when the when the when the Sinaloa cartel were actually uh, uh, torturing, you know, uh, 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 Kiki Camarena, the DEA agent that they can't they captured, right? So here you have a, a CIA agent watching the D, a DEA agent being tortured. I mean, and so you have like that kind of conflicts within this government. Is what I'm trying to get to get to you, get at is that you have some of these conf conflicts in within this government, you know, between security services and this service and the military and this shit. I mean, it's like a fucking mess over here. You know, it, 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 you know, they, it, it, the 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 drug addiction problem is, is tremendous here in the states. Well, it's here in the states because it's really. <laughs> I mean, have you, I've never been in a, in a country in, in America where there is so much poverty as you see nowadays. There wasn't this kind of poverty in the 50s and 60s and the 70s. And, and when you wanted to see bums in Manhattan, you went to the uh, uh, the Bowery where the alcoholic bums who had just given up on society had like a little area where they lived that they called the Bowery in New York. And that was like, the and they weren't homeless. They, they had... Look, they lived in shelters, but that was like the you know, the worst thing that you did see. Or you saw, you know, people living in ghettos. Of course, that's always been a big problem here. But you know, it, it, it's uh, 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 it wasn't the addiction problem that they're having now. Even the, during the seventies, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, you had these people that the the uh, 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 the heroin became immense in the seventies. Came immense in the seventies, in the in the eighties, the coke, and then the speed, and then the this, and then the that. You got people here bouncing off the fucking walls, you know. And they have nowhere to put their energy because they got no jobs. You know what I mean? I mean they they, they they they're homeless now. They so they can't. They don't have any kind of identification or a postal address where they could even get a job. You know what I mean? So like we have failed society, you know. We have failed society. People are uptight about, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know. I mean, we have failed. American society has failed itself. I mean, nowadays people can't even afford to live and buy a house. And when I was a kid, you could buy a house for like a couple thousand dollars. Those houses are worth millions today in New York. You know, so uh, uh, you know, we're 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 you know, it's what I call socioeconomic slavery we're still enslaved but we're enslaved economically and so it, it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse how bad can it get and the, the people have only way to, to 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 be able to survive it is to be high or to be out of your mind on drugs you know what i mean and so I don't know. I mean, something's got to give, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, this whole thing with abortion and, and civil rights. And they're, they're, these people are fighting each other for the past 150, 200 years. They don't let it go, man. You know what I mean? It's a one thing. It's a good thing that they fi they finally indicted uh, Trump and they're probably going to indict him on three different fucking events. I mean, you know, I how can you believe the American government if that guy's still walking the street? 
Imagine if you would have done the things that that guy did. Man, I remember, I go back to smoke a joint, go to jail, dude. <laughs> we, we, which we never should forget that they put us through the drug war. The drug war, uh, I've joined this group. It's called the uh, 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 Re-Legalize in Nepal. They were going, legalize Nepal, legalize Nepal. And I said, why legalize Nepal? you got to re-legalize. It was already legal in Nepal. It was the last legal country, and the King Barendra made it illegal. Now you have to re-legalize it. So we've changed the title to re-legalize Nepal. And so uh, and my influence on the on the group has been and i've done a couple of podcasts about us it's about ending the fucking drug war you know uh 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 uh, uh the drug war has been man's greatest inhumanity in a man the drug war was created so that certain drugs that so that the, the pharmaceutical country, country uh, companies would control certain drugs and we'd never be able to grow them for ourselves or or even know about them right so uh, finally, when the science caught up to 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 the uh, to cannabis and to all the drugs, and they figured out how to make them with chemicals, uh, uh, basically what they did is they made Mother Nature illegal and, and, and supplying you with chemical concocted copies ever since. And since that time, uh, they've changed the way we eat, the way we take our medicines, the way uh, uh, I mean everything. Our whole you know, it's not the, the food don't taste the same. You know, you're buying you're buying a house that cost three thousand dollars in the fifties. Now it's costing you three million dollars. I mean, who's running things, dude? Whoever it is, man, stop it. Put his ass to jail or put him against the wall, dude. You know, uh, uh, the guy that the guy that 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 Cuban uh, agent, uh, 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 the guy who witnessed Guevara. Uh, 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 be be uh, assassinated, basically executed. Uh, uh, you know, all they did did was martyr, uh, martyr Che, and he became a hero, created a, the revolution in Bolivia, and today they have a socialist government. And the right wing government has tried to do everything to to overthrow the uh, uh, the legally elected governments in Bolivia. And they ended up all going to jail, which was a nice thing to see. I mean, that we have a democracy. We can, do, you know, and they break the law. They go to jail too. The whole thing that you, that 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 some people are above the law. Fuck that. Nobody's above the. You weren't above the law when they when they threw you in the paddy wagon for a fucking joint. Think about it. All the shit that the, these people are getting away with right now. Right. And 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 they were throwing us in jail for a joint. So anyway, what we want to do is is we we try to we we want to try to influence Nepal and the Nepalese government, and that's another re th reason I'm going back to Southeast Asia, is that influence them that Nepal being the last country in the world, right to 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 make it illegal cannabis illegal have been legal. To ten thousand years, they made it illegal uh, uh, that they should be the first country to end the drug war. End the drug war officially. Don't arrest people for pot anymore. If people are on drugs, send them to rehab. Yeah, I, I completely change the vernacular. The completely change the, the the way we even think about drugs. And before, if if if, if people had a a, a drug problem. They they had a they had a, a, a that that was dealt with by the pharmacy that was dealt by doctors dealt with with doctors they took it away from the doctors and made it a police where where the police arrest you for drug use my God I mean <laughs> if they arrested everybody in America today for for drug use I won't, you'd have probably about twenty five percent or more people arrested you know what I mean I mean come on man I mean. You know, uh, 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 they're not going to arrest their way out of the drug problem. The way that they're going to end the drug problem is by changing the laws across the board and changing the attitude of the people like they did in, in, in Portugal. In Portugal, you can't go to jail if you have a grandma or heroin. Same thing in, in Arizona and in, uh, Oregon now. 
uh, you have a, 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 a some heroin in your pocket enough for you to get your fix you know enough for you is you not it's obvious that you're not selling it you're using it they don't arrest you they don't arrest you for drug use in in Oregon in, in Oregon now you have coke in your pocket you know they, they don't even take it away from you if you're dealing this shit then you're then you're gonna have a problem you know and so we need that type, that type of attitude to be changed across the globe. But we need one country to stand up and say, hey, I'm not fucking playing the drug war anymore. You know? And and in Nepal, they got like, prior to, prior, when I first went to Nepal in 1969, 70, where I was working there in 68, 69, but I went there in 70. Uh, 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 there was no such thing as a Nepalese heroin addict today if you go to nepal they've got 190,000 addicts and hundreds of thousands of people that have hiv and the first thing that you saw the day that they made marijuana illegal in february uh, uh 1973 that day kids started to sell weed on the street where before, if you wanted any weed or anything uh, 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 like that, you'd go to the pharmacy or you'd go to the to the uh, 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 government registered uh, weed store. You couldn't buy weed on the street in Kathmandu, no. But you'd go to a coffee shop, you'd go to a thing, and we have to get that generalization back. And and uh, 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 they're also going to start a. I forget the name of the. Uh, 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 I forget the name of the herb. It is a kind of herb that uh, that you take when you're on when you're on when you're addicted to drugs, and it it it, it makes it, it it turns you off to the drugs. It's sort of like uh, uh, ibogaine. It's called ibogaine. It's an herb. It comes from Africa. Where a lot of a lot of herbs and medicinal plants used to come from most of them uh the ibogaine they're using for people to uh, uh change their attitude and to clean them up from from heroin addiction they, they it's a natural way of using herbs and and uh to to bring people down from being from their addiction you know the when people are addicted to drugs they're like in the West. In the West, people are addicted to drugs, but more, much more so, their addiction to the drug is the addiction of getting the money for the drug and then finding the drug and getting their hands on the drug. So, uh, in a 24 hour period, a drug addict spends like 16 hours looking for the money and looking for the drugs and then finally getting the drugs and he spends the next of the time high. Then you know, and it's like a vicious cycle. So once you just give, like in 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 Switzerland and in in uh, 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 I don't know, uh, there's there's a few countries that have heroin programs. In uh, in the 1960s and the 50s, 60s, and 70s, it didn't end until the 70s. There was a heroin program in England. You were a heroin addict. You could go and, and and you had a prescription and they gave you your doses for the for the month or for the week, however they worked it. And there was a legal heroin program. And the heroin addicts, they maintained their regular jobs. They were all self-sufficient. They didn't need to steal or to rob. They could have their own jobs. And they 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 managed to work and have their own jobs their whole lives and at the same time be using heroin their whole lives. So, because after a certain point, if you're using heroin every day, uh, it doesn't get you high. So all you need is enough to maintain your dose so that you don't get sick. So these guys were on heroin maintenance and it worked. They, they, they delivered your mail, they delivered the milk, they delivered this, they delivered that. People don't realize that that was a legal thing in the 50s, 60s and 70s, that they had a legal heroin uh, a program in 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 England. Okay, they had an illegal opium uh, program in 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 uh, uh, Iran. You could be a legal opium addict. You get your opium from the government. 
There was, so there was no crime attached to it. The same thing in Thailand. Thailand had a legal opium monopoly and people would be registered and they'd get their opium, uh, 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 you know, uh, legally. But then the drug war and, and the, 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 uh, the UN charter made that illegal. So they, they made drugs criminal. When before the governments had monopolies, and if you were a drug addict, oh, sorry that you're a drug addict, but here, here's your drugs, very cheap. Right? So uh, uh, the whole attitude of, 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 of addiction has, 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 been, has been changed. Now you have people who are taking micro doses of, of, uh, of uh, psilocybin. Psilocybin was a cure for uh, for alcoholism, the first one of the first cures that they used are the psychedelics for alcoholism. That's what the thing about it, ibogaine. It's sort of a psychedelic effect, uh, an effect on your system. It changes your changes your system around, you know. And so uh, 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 the whole attitude of the drug war is created so that there is a drug war. They made a, they made a, a crime out of being of, of being a weak person in society. They made it a crime to to want to feel good, or how you want to feel good, or what you're using to make you feel good. Right? One of the things that marijuana does is that it makes you feel good. Why would they outlaw something that makes you feel good? You know. So that they've made they've made all these laws of 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 of, uh, of drugs that people are going to want or they're going to need or they're going to you know or, or herbs that they want to use or the herbs that they want to take that are from Mother Nature and and they made those illegal they made Mother Nature illegal now they put you to jail how many years did they put people in jail for psilocybin? or for peyote buns, or ayahuasca, or ibogaine. Now, they're talking about legalizing it. But we went through 30 years or 40 years of their bullshit fucking drug war, right? And now it's all going to be legal, but it's under their control completely. But what about the 40 years of people doing 30 years in, 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 in prison for because they had a big load of weed and never had a, 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 a violent offense in their life? You know, uh, marijuana is not a violent, a violent driven drug. Opium and heroin and all that stuff are not a violent driven drug when they're given to you freely. <laughs> When you can't get them and you have to get money to get them and you have to pay up your ass to get them, then you, it becomes a criminal offense and a criminal a crime. They created crime. The drug war created crime, created a criminal society in America. They use it so that they can take away your fucking voting rights even. I mean, you, you go to jail, you spend your five years in jail, paid your debt to society, but when you get out, you lose the right to vote. Hey, fungal you. You know what I mean? The shit's getting old, man. The shit's getting old. Uh, 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 America has lost prestige around the fucking globe. More, more people trust China than they trust America. You know? I mean, it, it, you know, you look, you look at the, you look at, the, you look around you today. You know, fucking the price of fucking gold, oil is like what three bucks or four, but whatever. And, you know, uh, uh, we're still using the 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 internal combustion engine that was invested invented like 150, 180 years ago. They're gonna shove that oil down your throat until there ain't a drop left, and there's never not going to be a drop because the the planet produces oil. To lubricate itself, right? I mean, if we would have just like in the, when we had uh, uh, Jimmy Carter, you know, Jimmy Carter was the greatest president that I've been, since I've I've been in a, a born here. Uh, 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 he put solar panels on the roof of the fucking White House. Imagine if we would have solar panels on everybody's houses today. We'd all be rich. We'd all have money. We'd all have cars. We'd all have everything. 
but because we're we're burdened by by antiquated methods that only make a certain amount a certain group of people richer you know we're like enslaved they they invented they had a couple of people who invented uh 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 vehicles that ran on water they got it they got they they lost it they got they bought their so the companies bought their patent then buried the patents and the people who who invented them were killed it's like you know we're being played all the fucking time man after a while it's sort of boring man and then you talk to these kids and they, they're all educated and everything but they don't have their history. They have it. They don't have their civics. They don't have their their world history, the history of the planet, the history from three hundred years ago, the history from fifty years ago when it was legal to be a heroin addict in London. <laughs> right? I mean, did you you never heard that they had a legal heroin uh, 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 program in London? Did you? Yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah. And that, and that only ended until 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 1970 or in the 60s you know <laughs> so basically most of the people here that that are super intelligent they don't really know their history they really don't know their history you know uh, 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 a lot of the old, a lot of the bad vibes that were that that are going on today right are stuff that we created hundreds of years ago we're still fighting the civil war we're still look at the problems that slavery has created. Look, I mean, it just I don't know. It just you know, I, I, when you look at the planet, it gets crazy. When I'm, you know, it's getting crazier and crazier and crazier every day. And you tell people, well, there used to be a legal heroin program in in London. They don't believe you. But then if you put it into Google, they'll they'll tell you, yeah, they used to have a legal heroin pro when when there was a legal heroin pro uh, 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 program in London, there was no such thing as theft. You didn't have burglaries, people breaking into houses to steal money to buy drugs because they got their drugs. Uh, if they didn't pay, if they didn't pay for them, the government gave them to them for free. And in, in England. They were on. The, they were on the. Uh, uh, they got a card. They got so much heroin. You know, they were allowed. You know, so once you take all that criminalization away, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know, I see it. I see it more. Another way of explaining it is, is, uh, 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 you know, weed, you know, we, I, for the first time I, I, at one of these shows, one of these kids came up to me and said, man. What have they done to weed? It doesn't get you high anymore, you know. And I look at them and say, "Well, they don't. They don't want it. They're, they're not interested in getting you high. They're interested in bag appeal, uh, uh, the the way your buds are trimmed, and smell and taste. And getting high is like the last thing that you that they that they care about. It's just whether you look at it, you like it. It looks good enough for you to buy." As long as you get you get their money, you're gone. The, in my day, if it didn't get you high, you couldn't sell it. <laughs> I don't know what, what you know. It's, uh, uh, yeah, and so uh, 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 you know, the whole the, uh, the whole uh, they they're taking away the fun of smoking marijuana. You know, you know how, how many times you you could just sit back with a few of your friends, have a beer, relax, have some laughs. You know, have dinner with your friends, and smoke a joint, relax. You know, they've taken that they they they've made it they made it where it doesn't even work in some cases. You know, they they created products like BHO uh, uh, to process your your weed through through a butane to get a stronger effect. When you can get a stronger effect just by 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 the method that you use to process your cannabis into hash. If you have great hash, there's no need for any of that uh, that uh, uh, dab stuff. They created that dab industry. They created that industry when basically it was a much more simpler thing to smoke a joint, smoke a piece of hash, eat a little hash, have a tincture. You know, it was much easier way. Now they've made it all complicated. 
you, you want to get high and you want to do adapt then you may have to use spend like hundreds and thousands of dollars you know just to have all the equipment to do adapt you know what i mean well i just want to roll a joint and get high <laughs> so you know the 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 we have to change the attitude of the way people think about drugs and take away the criminal aspect of it one and and you know uh uh uh, uh basically you know uh, uh end the drug war and once we and once one country ends the drug drug war and other countries will follow suit portugal will follow suit other countries will follow suit because everybody is sick of the drug war you know the drug war creates crime the drug war creates criminals the drug war creates criminals from people who normally have regular jobs and regular things to do a function normally in society and 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 uh, uh, made them into criminals they they took a heroin and and they made a methadone as a uh, as a way to call methadone maintenance uh, as a way for people to get people off of heroin but once they get them off of heroin you got them now on methadone which is like a hundred times harder to kick to get rid of to get, to get off the habit of heroin of methadone than heroin is so you can, it, that's why they call it methadone maintenance they were going to maintain you on methadone the opiate that they approve of right and keep you on that level for the rest of your life well, they used to have heroin maintenance. You could do that with heroin, you know. You could do that with heroin. You know what we what we have found is that once you take the 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 uh, the 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 the, the, the taking the get, getting the money to get the drug, the search for the drug. Once you just take all that out of the equation and you just give a, give a, 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 an addict a place where they can go and do the do the drug legally and they're giving the drug legally and they do it on a legal basis then they have time for self-reflection and they at that point when they don't have to spend the rest of their days getting getting the dope getting the money for the dope or whatever uh, they have more time for self-reflection that in itself is, is uh, 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 drives people to stop using drugs, heroin in particular. The same thing with, with Ibogaine. Ibogaine uh, 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 gives you an aversion. It makes, and it gives you an aversion to the drug. You know, I don't, I, you know, I, I really need to study more on Ibogaine, but the, the, the effects, you know, are, 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 it's an herb that's given in Africa and, and it's used for drug addiction. It's a psychedelic herb and it helps people maintain and get off of the drug, get off of hard drugs. Just like LSD helps people get off of alcoholism or uh, what is it? Psilocybin. So we have to change the attitude of the way people look, think of people on drugs. The guy who is on drugs, he, he isn't a criminal. He's a person who's a weak person who has problems. You know, but the the big the big problem that we have are the pharmaceutical companies because the pharmaceutical companies are the one that run everything. You know, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, I can I can only imagine how many drugs they're making from from cannabis now that it's legal and they've DNA it and they have all the different terpenes and all the different cannabinoids and you know uh, how many things have they drugs have they created just from that you know so you know uh we're being played man. and 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 uh you know uh you know but people say uh, there's an expression now it's called woke and they're they're down on people that are woke right and so i don't understand woke what does that mean you're that you're aware that you're awoke you you've awakened you're aware to something and the people that are, that that are not woke aren't. It seems to be like, it seems to me stupid. It seems to me stupid because you would want to be aware. You would want to be uh, awoke. 
you know, and I don't want to be asleep. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, you know, things are crazy nowadays, you know, and, and uh, 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 the people's attitudes have got to change on a governmental level, but the, 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 they have to change on, on the, uh, uh, the pharmaceutical companies. They're, they're outrageous. You know, I, in India, they have a cure for hepatitis C. And uh, in India, the, 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 the pill for, for, to cure hepatitis C, you take it for like 60 days, and 60 days is, is completely gone out of your system. That same pill in America is $1,000 a day. The same pill that they get to get in India for a dollar a day is $1,000 a day. And the VA gave me my bill, my pills, because I'm a veteran. I got those pills for free. But how much did the VA pay for pay the pharmaceutical companies for that for that for that product? So uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the the pharmaceutical companies they have their 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 game down with the VA, with the Medicare, Medicaid. They're calling the shots, man. It's 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 a funny situation, you know, but uh, that's what it is. I mean. You know, things need to change. We need to, we need these young people to be to get in charge, man. You got these old people there that just, you know, ne never cared about anything but themselves. You know, so the, the 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 we have to change the attitude. We have to re we have to end the fucking drug war, man. Put it put a fucking bury that fucking war once and fucking for all, and change the attitude of the people. And and so then we can get a grip on this stuff. Otherwise, people are going to get more and more and more and more and more drugged down. The it's it's funny because you hear, I hear I'm in a state like Oklahoma, and you know people here are like stuck on stupid. There's nothing that you can do, you know. And, and there are people that are really stuck on stupid, and 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 you know, uh, it's you know I'm like a stranger in a strange land. Here I am. In, I'm in my own country, but I might as well be in the third world. You know, on on certain things. I mean, you know, so it's like uh, 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 you know we've got to end the drug war. Ending the drug war officially will be the the uh, it's man's greatest inhumanity to man was making Mother Nature illegal. We've we've survived without Mother Nature. We wouldn't survive. Without Mother Nature, we wouldn't have food to eat. Without Mother Nature, we wouldn't have the 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 the, the medicinal plants and herbs that we've le learned about through trial and error the last ten thousand years. You know, so uh, 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 something's got to give. You know, something's got to give. The and it's funny because. You know the the when the when the drug war when the when Reagan was the president and ended the drug war by letting the police sell shit as a way of infiltrating marijuana groups. When they did that, the scene moved over to Amsterdam. When, it, when the scene moved over to Amsterdam, uh, the Dutch just, you know, to the Dutch, it's just like another flower. They wanted to be able to control it. Since they did that, 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 that the, uh, the damage the Dutch have done to cannabis I don't know if it's if it's repairable because they've mixed everything up, you know. But you know, uh, 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 nowadays they're 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 coming down on 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 Amsterdam on the Amsterdam scene. They're not they're not uh, uh, as inviting as they had been, you know. I've heard they've made a lot of changes there. You know, they still have coffee shops and stuff. But uh, it's funny they have coffee shops, but they don't know. But they they don't they're not allowed to grow the stuff. The stuff, but they're allowed to sell it in the coffee shop. But where do they does the coffee shop get them, get it from? You know, they, the, in in places like Amsterdam, they have the police that that any of the confiscated drugs that are caught is resold by the police to the coffee shops. You know. <laughs> It's a weird scene there. It's a weird scene, but that. So now, <clears throat> wherever you go, you know, there's some, there's a, a Dutch people, Dutch scene, Dutch crew, you know, 
that, that's been the real damage to the to the growth scene here. So I, I eventually think that probably within if, if if some one of these guys, may, you know, the the uh, people say, well, it's legal in thirty six states. Why doesn't the, the the government makes it illegal? Make it make it legal. The government. It depends on which government you're talking about. Are you talking about the federal government or you're talking about the pharmaceutical government? If you're talking about the pharmaceutical government that runs the federal government, then they don't want it legal. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, because you figure you, you have 36, 38 states that are medically legal. Wow. Why wouldn't the, they take the banner up and make it medically legal like carter carter was the greatest fucking president of my lifetime he made medical marijuana people who have medical there's about five six people still left alive that had medical licenses that were issued to them by by uh by uh, by jimmy carter right he was the one that created the medical program in in uh, uh, the university of mississippi you know and you know, if uh, uh, the th some of the things that that Carter did were way ahead of the time, you know, way ahead of the time. And I know that Carter, uh, uh, that uh, uh, that Jimmy Carter lived in the times when marijuana was legal. If you could get a prescription and go to the store pharmacy and get marijuana, so you know he knew he knows the game. And so uh, imagine. Uh, 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 if we would have pursued more medical marijuana from that day on and pursued solar power from the 60s, today everything in America would be solar. But to, it's not because the pharmaceutical companies are, and or the, the oil companies don't want you to be. They don't want you to be free. And in fact, I found I tried to get some solar. I did get some solar on my roof. But you know, uh, there's there's the oil companies have put little like uh, 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 dotted, you know, uh, 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 you know, like when, when you when you get solar to your house, you have the solar equipment on your house, right? But if let's say the electricity goes out, your solar goes out because your solar is connected to the electric electricity. So I, you know, what good is it? You can have twenty, you can have a hundred thousand dollars worth of solar equipment on your roof if you ain't got power to to, to power it. It don't work for you. <laughs> See, they've done all these things and not make it easy to make it harder because they don't want you to have it. But you know, uh, 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 states like Texas, states like New Mexico. Uh, uh, Oklahoma, you know, uh, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, these really sunny states, they produce enough sun power to run the whole fucking grid of the whole country. One, 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 one major country in Africa that if the whole country was solar would be enough to run the whole solar system, the whole uh, 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 system, uh, electric system into Africa. Africa is one is the country that's uh, more solar is going on in Africa than there is in America. You know, I mean, so in Nepal, you in Nepal you have solar, but when you have solar, it it goes directly into the power of your house. It doesn't go to the the electric company, and then you buy it, you get it from them. See, everything here is backwards because they don't want you to have that because they've been making that money from oil. Since since day one, and they they've been and that's how their fortunes have, have been made. They don't want you to to take that away from them. Solar power would take that away from everybody, and but give the power back to you. Well, it's not just solar power though. Oil money's dirty. Oil yeah. money's super dirty. They, I mean, all the stuff that happens from oil is pharmaceuticals they found a way to their waste that they can't get rid of that they would get in trouble for just outright dumping into the grounds or rivers they found a way to 
alchemy that into a fucking medicine and other chemicals and shit to poison us and make us sick until we're depending and until we cut our ties with that oil money we're fucked but as far as like solar energy that shit's still requiring like batteries and stuff like that nikola tesla when he was alive well, I mean, and it's still possible. Zero point energy and shit like that. There's ways around solar and shit. We we they don't they we could not pay for power now and and skip the solar shit. But they don't want none of that. Morgan and all them guys put a squash to that. I mean, oil and all the electricity stuff. I mean, that goes deep, man. They they own the companies that make the wire, the copper, you know what I mean? They've got a lot to lose. Electricity goes down, then nothing requires wires, transmitting wires and shit like that. They lose money in metal sales and all that good shit. I mean, it's layers on layers on layers based on this Petro shit. You know what I mean? It's sad all that it's so dependent on that oil money. It's and the, funny, and the thing about it is, is that, is that the the we've advanced on a certain levels faster than we on on certain levels faster, and on some other levels we're kept in the 19th century. You know what I mean? It's like we're dependent on oil. Look at all the shit that's dependent on oil. Right. So even though we have all the super technology, we're still tied to technology from 300 years ago, 200 years ago. So it's really hard to advance. And then they 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 and then they talk about uh, 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 artificial intelligence. <laughs> that means that what, what does that mean? That's, that machines start doing the thinking for you. I don't understand that yet. Do you do you understand that? <laughs> I know that they have these these things now where you can give them a thought, right? And they can they can uh, 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 write about it in a way that would sound better and look better than if you did it yourself. And they do all that by themselves. You just give them the idea. And they come up with the with the intelligence. I don't Shit, know. that's the already now. How many times you pick up your phone, go to text somebody, yeah. and the predictive text has already got the first word of what you were gonna type, and it's already without even putting one word in, it's already tit, 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 it knew yeah. what you were gonna fucking say. Unbelievable. That's, that's fucking scary. Unbelievable. We, we it's hard to catch up to that stuff. That's the problem. People are having problems. Uh, the intelligence uh, uh, is ahead of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the only way to keep ahead, keep ahead of the intelligence is to be able to stay young. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, you know, I, I, uh, it, it, the world has gotten very complicated, but there are certain things that are not that complicated. And the, the 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 ending the drug war uh, will will help every aspect of life because it, 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 you know it, it basically uh, uh, you know makes mother nature legal again you know that's where that's where that that's where we we fucked up is is the making of mother nature illegal and losing that information that we had you know where we could do certain things everybody knew how to you know milk cows and grow tomatoes and grow vegetables and do this and do that you know people don't know how, how to is do cannabis that. the most world's dangerous plant I mean, the yeah. one thing that can be broken down and in, into molecules and it gets, you know what I mean? There's dangerous levels to it. It ain't just the plan. It's the structure and shit. How would it become so fucking dangerous when it's probably the healthiest, one of the healthiest plants? Sir? Well, that, that's part of the propaganda program. They look at the look at the uh, the marijuana, anti-marijuana program. That was all based on bullshit. They've been using marijuana as, as medication and medicine for for man or beast 
for thousands of years. Dude. They've been using marijuana for camp, uh, hashish for PTSD you know, for years, you know, since the days of fucking Rome, since the days of Alexander, you know, you know, and uh, 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 the Chinese were introduced to opium. They were, opium wasn't a, 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 a problem in China, wasn't grown in China. This was introduced, you know, by the Greeks. They came up with the opium, you know. But, you know, uh, uh, you, know uh, uh, you know, when you when you look at the history of the world and you see certain things that happened in the past, and how they how they're affecting everybody today. It's just like you know, it's like crazy shit. You know, it's like in Iran, uh, 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 in, uh, uh, I guess at the, in the in the early part of the twentieth century, they had a revolution there, and they had a, a, a democratically elected governor, a uh, 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 president, and Kermit. Roosevelt uh, overthrew the government by having by staging protests in the street, who he paid people every day for daily wages to be protesting in the street. And they overthrew this government, put him under house arrest for the rest of his life in Mossadegh, and they brought the Shah of Iran in. What happened is that the 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 uh, the, uh, the democratically elected government in Iran, the first thing that they did was was uh, uh, nationalized uh, British petroleum. So for the first time in in in, in the history of Iran, uh, uh, they own their own their own their own oil. So Kermit Roosevelt uh, 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 overthrew the guy who had the guy overthrown the guy uh, who who was who 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 did that. Right, and and he got put under house arrest, and the Shah of Iran got made the the, the head of, of Iran, right? But the 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 oil stayed. The one thing that Mossadegh did is that the oil was nationalized. It was now the property of fucking Iran, right? So, uh, 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 you know, so here we are, like here we are, like you know, a hundred years later. And and we're you know we have a, we have like some kind of en enemy thing going down with Iran and and the and the and and, and the, the mullahs and all that other stuff and 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 they they, they threw the Shah out finally they had a revolution to him out. he was the biggest fucking piece of shit that ever fucking lived you know uh, I was actually in for the the, the two thousand year uh, anniversary of Cyrus the Great. And so I, I lived through that period and, and, and uh, 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 the Shah of Iran, he was so fucking filthy rich that he, he, uh, he threw a, a, a party where he flew, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, everybody in on private jets and tents and they had they ate the best in the world well down this down 100 miles down the road people were starving they threw this this unbelievable where everybody got a rolex and everybody got you know gift bags and everybody got ate off of gold and everything you know I mean? like real decadent shit and that they overthrew him for that and and uh uh uh, uh and now we have all this pro trouble with iran you know uh, uh, where if we would have just let them run their own fucking trip, you know, they may they, they would let their election be, and, and then Mozadek be Iran would be an advanced country in our pocket today, and 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 we'd be doing business with they, and the vibe would be the vibe would be open, but because we've been trying to manipulate and control Iran because of their oil, we've created. <laughs> based on our foreign policy foreign policy based on the fucking uh, 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 internal combustion fucking engine and all the shit that you just spoke about you know and so uh, 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 you know uh, it, uh, you know sometimes I think that we're not going to survive as a as a, a planet if we don't change the way we do things drastically you know 
you know, we we could be we could be like you know, uh, uh, we could have lived like that. We we might be living like in the last of whatever good was, you know, whatever's here we have left now. I mean, we could this could this could be like you know, I mean, uh, 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 I don't know. I mean, it's just like it's like too crazy. It's like at the, at the same point at the same time. They, you know, they, 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 they you know, they, they we're poisoning the planet like crazy. You know, the the Chinese people complain about the change of subject. It gets depressing. Fucking combustion oil engine. The fucking what a joke. The 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 change of subject. You know, in 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 uh, in the states, a lot of Asians have gotten into the marijuana business. Like you know. Uh, in Oklahoma and, and California and, and Arizona, everywhere, they've got into the business. They have, you know, they, you know, they have an affinity for it, and they grow weed. They don't get high, they, so they don't. They grow weed that just looks has a, a bag appeal, look good, tastes good, smells good, you know. Uh, 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 but and so there, are people complain. I mean, here in Arizona. They're, they're sort of anti-Oriental here, anti-Chinese. Uh, 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 but you see them like in, in the, you know, they're taking over the industry. They're taking, they're growing indoors, they're growing outdoors, they're growing in greenhouses, they're growing legally, they're growing illegally. They're growing. The Chinese government is buying up land, right? And 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 the rights to to all the opium and all the the, the cannabis products from Afghanistan, and they'll be the only ones that'll be able to trade in it. When I heard that, uh, 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 it blew my mind. Because if they control Afghanistan, they control the whole fucking, uh, 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 yeah. well, I don't know. I, you, know. you can take that either good or bad. I don't know. Uh, 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 but they they're making a big 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 moves in Asia. They they have a they have a a, a port in Pakistan. They have railroad trains everywhere. They have railroad trains across Africa. They build railroads across South America. You know what I mean? Uh, they're they're all over the pl a place, and people trust them more than Americans. They're getting better deals, and they're getting more deals because. People are getting tired of of, of the bullshit, of the, of of the uh, 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 you know, of the bullshit attached to a deal. You know what I mean? You you want to join the UN? <clears throat> you have to be a member of the UN. You have to sign the UN Charter. That was the UN Charter was was uh, 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 written by uh, Henry Anslinger. Okay, he was the Federal Bureau of Narco of, uh, of of dangerous drugs before there was DEA and all that, uh, and Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs. Before of all of that, he was like the F. There was FBI, which was uh, J. Edgar Hoover, and there was the FDA, which was Anslinger. And basically, they uh, uh, <clears throat> they were more on the prohibition side as far as weed and stuff, uh, as far as alcohol and stuff, more so than weed. It was only taken seriously when it was much later, and, you know. But anyway, the, the, the you know, the, uh, the Chinese are making a big move. I mean, they're making big moves in Asia to supply, you know, cannabis and, and, and opium and everything in Asia, you know. And, you know, maybe you know, the pharmaceutical companies will have to go to them. I don't know what's going on. But and when I heard about it, I thought that was really strange. You know, so no one else can do business there but the Chinese. When it comes to those products. So, yeah, the, the, the world is changing. You know, and I and I, I spoke to my friend the other day, my friend Namad. And and uh, he lives up in uh, uh, Lahore. And he's a, he's a friend of mine for a long time now, more than a decade. And, and uh, <clears throat> you know, he told me he said, "Man, the Chinese have so much influence here." He says, "I have much more influence here than Americans do." 
And I think that you'll find that all over the world, that in these third world countries, these African countries, these South American countries, the, uh, the Chinese are be, uh, developing long-term relationships and friendships. You know, you have to remember that the Chinese, uh, what was his name? Uh, Genghis Khan, the Khan, the, the Mughal, the, the, uh, 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 the 13th century, 14th century to 12th century China. He said that uh, a, a naked virgin could walk from, from Pepe to Rome and nobody dare touch her. That's the kind of power that the fucking Chinese had back then. You know what I mean? So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's just, that's just, you know, that's just the Chinese and we need to respect those people. I mean, God forbid we go into a war with China. Oh my God. Who, what are they going to do? Send, send a bunch of, of, of uh, uh, draft a bunch of fucking uh, dabbers? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you know, people need to get serious. You know, the the whole thing, uh, you know, is that, uh, and it has to go back to the pharmaceutical companies, and it has to go back to oil, and it has to go back, you know, uh, 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 you know, of where they're making Mother Nature illegal is, you know, they 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 they've created they have labs in, in, in Amsterdam and you know Rochelle Oil has labs all over the world and they're trying to produce stuff that gets you high using fucking uh, uh, petroleum products. They and they have people that that spend their, their whole day every day of their whole fucking life coming up with new products to be able to sell cannabis. That's how they came up with BHO. Who knows what else they can, they're going to come up with? You know what I mean? So it, it, it's, it's, it, it's, you know, there's, there's uh, 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 you know, something's got to be done. But I, I've got a feeling that, it, that this, is, this is like self-destruction. You know what I mean? It's like the, the planet is self-destructing itself. It's, not, it's like committing suicide itself. You know, it's not... Uh, 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 and and then even though you know some of us may be organic and 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 and, and live a clean life and the whole bit you know ninety nine percent of the of the world doesn't or, or what part of the world doesn't you know so I mean so I mean how, what what is it gonna what is it coming to you know what is it coming to you know another thing another thing that uh, 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 there are more UFO sightings now than ever before. <laughs> Have you seen some of the crazy stuff that's out there nowadays? So what's your take on that? What what what's the why is the increase now? They, they, they've been here all they've been, they've been here all along. For us to think that that we're the only ones is sort of foolish. But uh, uh, I think they I think they've been mining this planet forever. You know, <laughs> I think they mine it. You know, they've been mining it. There's something here that they want. You know, I don't know. But I haven't met any lately. <laughs> lately. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man, the, the the fucking the 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 petrochemical industry, the 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 the, the combustion engine, what a disaster! What a disaster! And you know, and it makes people so rich. People are so rich nowadays that they don't they have money that they don't even know what to do with. So. They do really insane things that because they don't have the uh, 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 the knowledge, they do stupid things, you know. And, and you know the the as a as an example, I had a friend of mine. He makes uh, uh, hundred percent pure Tibetan silk wall to wall rug, but 
No, he 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 makes it by order. So he 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 made these. You know, it it it, it costs like a thousand dollars a square foot. So like if you if you if you buy if you buy uh, 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 fifteen hundred square feet, it's like a million and a half bucks. So th th these guys bought a million and a half buck rug to put on in their game room. Like these guys, they're uh, 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 they're Mormons, and 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 they have they have houses. They have like forty houses, and they have a house that they go for Christmas, and they have a house that they go for Thanksgiving, and they. They have houses and they go for the ski area. They have houses they go over there. They got houses they go. So they got houses that you know. And so anyway, he uh, 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 they buy this million and a half dollar carpet, fantastic quality, and they hire a regular carpet layer to 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 put it in. And it's, these rugs are are are, are woven. You know, you can't cut them and fit them. You know what I mean? You have to you have they have to be treated. Once you cut them, you cut the weft and the warp. They come apart. They're not industrial carpets. These are man-made fucking carpets, man. So a friend of mine got the job of of, of repairing everything so that at least it looked decent because they hired some idiot guy. Well, he wasn't an idiot guy. He just didn't know how to how to lay that type of carpet. That was wall-to-wall handmade rug was in wall to wall rug that's made in a machine that's all handmade so they they got people have stupid money i mean here you, the in the last few days in the paper has been the uh, 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 the black judge what's his name on the supreme court that guy is so corrupted every year he's been paid by a mil billionaire guy and sent on like half a million dollar vacations every year sends him to christmas he's been to he's been to bohemian grove Right. And and uh, 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 he's the most conservative judge in America. And he's a black guy. And uh, 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 I forget I, I, I should know what his name is because his name is in the papers every day. But, uh, uh, you know, and, and they, they have so much money and so much wealth that it's like stupid. And well, at the same time, people are hungry. Well, at the same time, people who have a job don't have a job. Well, at the same time, people are getting paid in Oklahoma seven and a half bucks an hour to work. You can't live on seven and a half dollars an hour, you know. And so these guys have super amounts of money, and and well, and no, and then they have a, 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 a people that have super nothing, you know. And and today I, I was out in front of my my property and I was cleaning up, and the people just drive around, throw stuff out their window. So I'm out there cleaning. I cleaned up a whole 55 gallon thing of, of a, I mean, unbelievable how much I got out there. I picked it up and I know that I'm gonna have to do it again in two weeks. And people are just so frustrated. It's not that they don't want to live in a clean place. They don't know what it is to be clean. You know what I mean? They don't know what it is to be, to not have to fucking uh, 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 worry, have to, have to, have to every day do a certain amount of things or they die. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 so it's, and then you have people that have so much, right? That, that they, that, that they can do frivolous things that when, when, when other people, other people don't have enough money to eat or they, or, you know what I mean? Whatever. It just doesn't make sense to me. And, and, you know, I've been a Buddhist my whole life. And since I met the Chini Lama in 1970, and so I, I, I just don't see it. I, don't, I just don't see, you know, people like, you know, uh, uh, Bevos or, or, or Tesla or Musk or all these people not paying taxes when I, you know, when I'm paying more than, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm paying, I'm paying taxes. Why should I have to pay anything? Man, I, you know, my family's fought in every fucking war that this country's been in, except the civil one. I mean, I mean, how you know how much? What do what do you what do I have to do to to be an American? Get some fucking respect, man. I mean, you know, they complain. Oh, the you know, and 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 it's just these few free people that are so filthy wealthy that it's disgusting. And so I understand socialism. I understand where socialism 
comes from, uh, you know, totally, you know, and, 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 and it's just not fair. It's not fair that people can get away with doing whatever the fucking they please and you can't smoke a joint and not go to jail. You know what I mean? I mean, so, and then I, I'm saying smoke a joint, go to jail, but look at all the shit that, that these people have been getting away with for the past 150, 200 years, man. The last 300 years. I mean, look, how long are we going to be addicted to the, to the, to the, to the, to, to the combustion engine, to fucking oil. How long are we going to do that? When are we going to have somebody smart enough to shut these motherfuckers down? You know? And, and it's just, I don't know, man. I think I think we're on a road, you know. That's why nowadays, like, one of the biggest industries is having, like, a, 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 you know, bomb shelters. You know, people have, like, can't fancy bomb shelters and stuff you can only imagine what the government has to to hide to protect themselves from being destroyed when the shit hits the fan you know that's what we we i've worried my whole life my whole life we've worried that the shit was going to hit the fan and the shit hasn't hit the fan yet you know we haven't started fighting and fighting too much in the streets yet but you know getting close getting close you know Getting close. Imagine having you going to put in your kid to school and having some 19, 20 year old kid with an AK with a with an AR-15 come in and fucking kill your kid. You know. I I, I don't understand. I can't understand. I, I you can't put yourself in that realm of feelings unless you have it happen to you personally. You know what I mean? I mean, you can feel bad, of course, but, you, you know, but man, this shit's getting old. We're getting old. The shit that they did at the Capitol, I don't know how you feel about that, but I didn't like that at all. I didn't like that they attacked the Capitol. I didn't like that, that we became, like, out of control, third world-like, you know? We've low, we're not civilized anymore. If the politicians aren't civilized. The police aren't civilized. The armies aren't civilized. Nobody's civilized anymore. You know. You know, and 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 you know, it's so, strange. what Diggy Diggy Dank in chat is asking, can we ask Joel for some Howard Mark stories? The original Mr. Nice gets, uh, Joel gets a shout out in his book. Yeah, I, 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 uh, my, my girl, my last wife, uh, uh, Victoria, uh, she was married to my best friend, Afghani Ted, in the 60s and 70s, and she ran the first discotheque in Kathmandu, and her boyfriend was, uh, her, her partner was John Chick, and he was friends with, you know, with uh, uh, the Beat Generation, Ginsburg, and all those kind of people. And, and uh, uh, Howard, Mar uh, Howard Mark was a big player, and, and, uh, uh, his friend, his guy in Asia who fronted for him, Big Mick, was one of Victoria's boyfriends. So I know, I know uh, uh, him through two different angles: one from my other buddy, and one from from Victoria, and because of Nick, a uh, big Nick. And I had photographs of Nick, of of, of Big Mick, and and Victoria. Riding elephants at the Chittawan a Jungle Reserve down in Chittawan, uh, border of India of Nepal and India, and so I before Howard died, I sent him a photograph, a picture of Nick, of Mick, and and Victoria, and then and then he realized that he cried. He said, "Man, I hadn't thought about Mick. I hadn't seen Mick in so long. You made me cry again." I said, "I thought you would enjoy it." I really, really did. I said, you, you knew Victoria? I said, yeah, Victoria was my last wife. Victoria was a great woman. Uh, 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 so I'll tell you a funny story about Howard Marks. Uh, my boys were, were, were doing Colombian, and, and so one of them decided to, to uh, 
to bring a load to to London, and he and he connected to Howard with Howard Marks, and Howard Marks uh, uh, got a shipment of Colombian, and and uh, uh, some of it got busted, but he 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 apparently had taken his his part his cut out. And what got busted was the, the stash, somebody else, the big stash, but he had taken his cut out. So when he wrote, but when he, when he wrote about it in the book, he wrote about it in his book, Mr. Nice, he, he, he made himself, you know, look like he was the smart one, but he, he didn't lose because his stuff didn't, he didn't lose any of his stuff because I moved my stuff out the back door, right? The only thing was, was that he didn't tell the Colombians that he told the Colombians that he had lost everything. If he would have, if the Colombians would have known that Marx had kept any of it separate, they would have asked him for the money. Right. So uh, when 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 one of my buddies got out of uh, got out of jail, one of my, he'd done time in Brixton too in London. He got in London those days. They they it was the days of the. Uh, IRA and they were blowing cards up and people loved it. it was crazy shit going on uh, uh, my buddy got stopped driving in his car and he had a load of, of, of he had some Colombian weed in the trunk and he got pulled over he got busted he did some time in Brixton and so the the uh, uh, so my buddy my when my buddy got out of jail you know he read he read the book about Mr. Nice, you know. He said, "Hey, that motherfucker! He told us that that he had that he had, he had lost everything." <laughs> so actually, Howard had bullshitted, and 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 and, but he let the, he 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 himself like opened his mouth up on himself. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, but, but by the time that that happened was like 40 years later, there were no more Colombians left. But if back in the day, if the Colombians would have known that he kept some of it out. Because it wasn't paid for and it had to be paid for, but he kept that. He so, you know, he got it got written off as a loss, but it wasn't a loss because he had taken his cut out. So he should have at least paid that back in, but he kept that. So there's a Howard Marks story for you. <laughs> I appreciate it. We love the old stories like that, man. So the, 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 uh, uh, people don't forget, you know, about, about, about talking about Howard Marks. People don't forget about how big a, a, a market London was in the 60s and 70s for wheat and hash. It was huge. It was a bigger market than as a bigger market as New York, and much bigger market. Amsterdam was a was a was a a, a shithole in comparison to the scene in, in London and and, and and in England. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, it was a uh, 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 people and you couldn't get any weed in, in, in Amsterdam. The only weed you could get in Amsterdam was was uh, somebody might bring some stuff over from africa but it was basically a hash smoking scene in 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 london there was a big ganja market there was a big jamaican market there too there was hash weed there was they were selling colombian in jamaica in the, in london jamaican colombian panama red so all the really good shit that was for sale in america was for sale in london and england uh uh uh, uh you know up until you know uh, uh, Reagan, those years, you know what I mean. There was good shit in fucking London, you know. Always, always, always. I think London probably still has one of the biggest smoking, not as big as New York or maybe Bombay or New Delhi. Some places in India are really huge, lots of smokers, you know. But yeah, the so there was a whole other scene there in 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 uh, in in New York in 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 London and. Yeah, you, know, you could go to London. You could get Colombian gold. You could get red Colombian. You could get Thai sticks. You could get different kinds of hash, Lebanese, at Kashmiri. Had a really, really big market in London back in those days, as big as New York. New York, they said, had the biggest market in the world. It, it, it uh, 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 they smoked a ton of weed a day in New York back in the day. 
That was a big market. Ton of weed a day is a big market. You know, and basically in those days, weed was considered like kitty dope. It was much stronger. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, in New, it was uh, the laws were more were were crazier in Europe than they were in 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 the states in those days. You know, in the states in those days, the police arrested you. They just took the dope away from you and your money. They didn't bother doing any paperwork. They just took it, took your shit. Time for you to get a new pad. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was a whole different scene. But yeah, uh, uh, Howard did a lot of bit, a lot of, a lot of work in 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 uh, in, uh, in Pakistan. But he also worked in in Nepal. And Tori was uh, was one of his uh, uh, connections. And Mick was his his go guy, his uh, his front guy in in in, in London and, and from England. Uh, but he died. He died, uh, and when he died, he died many years before. And so he was a very, very close friend to Howard. And uh, he died. I think he OD'd. And uh, uh, so Howard missed him. You know, Howard did a lot of time. Howard, you know, he did. He he got sent to uh, uh, the toughest joint in America. They didn't fuck around with with Howard. They sent him to the fucking. I forget that. I'll think of it in a second. Uh, but it's like you know, it's like they only send the craziest motherfuckers there, in the federal system, right? And I I met I met you know I, I mean I mean crazy the the crazier the craziest of the crazy, and the crazier, go there. So it's like you know people you know. Body bags are going down in there all the fucking time. You need, you really, you can, you need to fucking watch yourself there. You, you don't want to offend anybody in that place. And so, uh, 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 what the name of that prison is? Prison. Owner. I'll think of it in a second. But uh, uh, he was there for like seven years. That was a tough, the toughest joint in the system, in, in, in America for, at that time. Now they have one in in uh, in. Uh, in Colorado, Big Max, you know, they have a bigger one, a more, even more scarier one than in, but, but in, uh, in, in, uh, in Colorado, you're, you're locked up 23, 23 and a half hours a day, some, some kind of crazy shit, you know, in, 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 uh, in, uh, I forget the name of that place, but I'll think of it in a second, uh, uh, it was like gladiator school, dude. I mean, like that. That's where, like that, like the they said that the 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 you know, the head of the fucking uh, Aryan Brotherhood and the craziest motherfucking DC blacks and all these and there's so much hatred and and animosity in there that you know you really have to. It's hard to be able to survive in that in that uh, uh, environment. You have, you'd have to because you have to be uh, at a certain level of crazy to get there. Right, and they said Howard there, man. I couldn't believe it. That it was like one of the toughest joint in the. He he was like a school teacher. He became a school teacher in there, and he was teaching the kids, the 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 inmates there, how to fucking read and write and do arithmetic and shit. <laughs> but uh, so he he managed to live through that, man. People don't manage to live through that place, you know. They really don't. And so he was there, man. He was. They sent him to the hardest prison in the world. And and the, and the funny thing is, is that the 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 he got ratted out by the Brotherhood, you know, and uh, 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 he had so he was really getting in some great hash, but he got ratted out by the Brotherhood because they 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 you know when 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 Reagan became the president, you know the the, the he let the he let the, the the police sell you dope and get high. When he let the police get high and hang out and party, that 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 led to the infiltration of marijuana groups. Because there were marijuana groups in America uh, uh, that just did marijuana. They didn't sell coke. They didn't sell dope. They didn't sell pills. They didn't sell anything. All they sold was weed, and they were weed business people. And basically, their word was their bond. It was a very very honest business, and it was, everybody knew each other from kindergarten. And and so when they let it, People get high. The cops get high. That's when the scene changed. Uh, 
with the brotherhood that went down, you know, and they, they, you know, they threatened you with 40 years, 30 for a long, long time, you know, and, and they ended up giving Mark, up, uh, 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 you know, Mark's up, you know. But he was on the lam for like many, many, many years. That Mr. Nice, that was his passport. That was his name, his English name. It was a, fa a false name. But yeah, he he uh, he died of cancer too. I heard that he didn't. Have, you know, he had a hard time in the end. You know, uh, but he died just recently. He died just you know within the last decade or so. I don't know. He died. You know, I made a mistake with with Howard, uh, uh, and I'll say this again because Howard is a, was a really a good guy. I didn't mean to say that day about that pain, the Colombians. That was something that you know, people had a way of doing business, but. But Nick, uh, 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 Howard was a good guy. He helped a lot of people. And when he came to, when I went to London, I did the uh, the Westward, the the that the Westward, the Weed World shows in London. Those were great shows, man. And uh, and he made overtures to, for me to go and talk to him. But I at that time I was like, you know, really going through like drug war paraphernalia, uh, paranoia. And I didn't really want to hang with Marx and one, you know, I just wanted was keeping it myself. I didn't know, you know, I was just new on the scene, on the, the quasi legal scene, the Dutch scene. And, 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 and London, I did the shows in London. I did the shows in, in, uh, in, in Switzerland. I did shows in Spain. I did shows in Amsterdam. I did shows in Germany. Uh, well, I wrote they 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 did they they translated my book into German. It's called Konig von Nepal. But the Dutch paid my publisher money not to publish the fourteen the fifteen ounce pound big farmers plan to pan pot. They paid my fucking my Swiss publisher off so as not to come out with that book because that book was like a uh uh you know, an indictment of the whole Dutch scene. You know, the, the Dutch haven't been good to us. They've only been good to themselves. And so the, 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 uh, uh, they, 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 uh, they paid my, I, my publisher, they actually went and paid off my publisher not to ever publish my shit again. And they, they paid, they threatened Skunk Magazine uh, uh, to cut off all uh, Dutch advertisement, which at that time was 60, 70% of their business. If they ever advertised, if they ever did another one of my articles again, the last article that they did, less late, less light, more weight, that article, they created 12 and 1. The, the, uh, uh, I could have signed the Non Disclosure Act and, and, and be rich and fat today. And said, I'm still struggling, and, and, and you know, I, I survive, and now I'm going to Thailand. I got a great job coming, waiting for me in Thailand, so I'm good. Shiva takes care of people, and and uh, but but uh, I could have had all of it if I would have gone to the castle in London in in, in Amsterdam, done by Ben Bronkers, and, and and I was invited there, and and uh, if I would have signed a non-disclosure act. And I would never, I would have had endorsement deals. I would have probably done a, a, a couple more documentaries. I would have probably had my book published in other languages. All this other stuff would have happened to me. And sometimes I think about that, why I didn't go for the gusto, go for the money, you know what I mean? But I resented the fact that these guys, that the Dutch would come over and now I'd go to fucking Holland. I'd go to fucking Jamaica and smoke fucking Dutch tree. Give me a fucking break. You know, the, the, the pot scene is our scene. It's a scene that we created here in America. And uh, 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 we, uh, it, was, it was, unfortunately, it was, it was uh, uh, switched over to Bangkok due to, uh, to, uh, to Amsterdam. And Amsterdam sort of like took over the scene. And since they took over the scene in Amsterdam, they, they were wanting to turn uh, uh, cannabis into tulips, you know. So the, the, uh, the, uh, Marx gets a lot of respect and he did in, in, uh, what is it? Oh, yeah. I 
can't, I'm still thinking about that name. It's in a really cold northern climate too. Oh, it, it's a he. It was like the the worst jail in America, you know, at the time. Now they have an even worse one now. But yeah, Mark said Mark got ratted out. He ended up doing like about seven years. Got out for good behavior because in those days he you you got fifteen years. You only had to do half. So he he got out in half, and they they did a they did an exchange in those days too. I don't know if people know about that, but let's say I got busted in 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 in, in London. So someone got busted in from Holland or from uh, 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 Denmark, and 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 uh, they would have a they would have a a transfer program. They transfer that pr that prisoner back to their own country. So let's say you were in Amsterdam, you got busted with, with American, well, not in Amsterdam, but in Finland or some other country, you could get sent back to your own country. They had an exchange program at the time. I don't know if they had it then, uh, uh, now. Maybe they do. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, Howard went, oh, went way, way back. You know, you know, it's funny how, you know, Howard also had his connections in the in the MI5. He was also a secret agent. <laughs> the, 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 he, he was a secret agent. The Brotherhood were secret agents. A lot of people were secret agents back then. You know, the skunk man, secret agent, Robert Connolly Clark, secret agent. You know, it's it's like funny, like I've lived long enough to for the secret agents to come out and say, oh, yeah, by the way, we were secret agents. You know, what I mean, it's funny to be able to watch that happen, you know, but uh, uh, I'm sort of glad that uh, 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 that I gave Howard that picture of it, of Mick riding an elephant in Chittawan. He got a kick out of it. And we came close at that point. But, you know, I just when I got out of the uh, and and then the the scene had changed, you know, the scene had switched over to Amsterdam. It was all about a Dutch. The Dutch hat way, netter hash, all this other stuff, and 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 uh, 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 I had what's his name? Oh. He wrote a book. Test me for weed. I've I've sold every kind of weed. He said, "What kind, what kind of weed is this from?" And I smoked it. And I said, "Wow, you know." I said, "I tell you, I don't. It's good, nice weed. It had you can see, it had a lot of different stuff." And I said, "But in the end." It had that Hawaiian flavor and that Hawaiian taste. I wish the whole joint would have been Hawaiian. And he got really mustered, uh, flustered because uh, I, I hit the I hit the nail on the head. But the farmer came over and said, "No, it's Jamaican. It's this. It's that." And the farmer came over and said, "No, he's right. He had that it does have the Hawaiian in the back end." I said, "Yeah. Why would anybody want any of the other shit when they can get that Hawaiian?" Why would anybody want that? And that's what that's what the Dutch have done. They've mixed everything up, right? So you really don't get the real classic, classy flavor and taste. A friend of mine, we've discovered the original Thai weed, uh, 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 Thai strains, and we're going to be bringing those back in. We're, we're 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 I'm doing my seed bank and I'm doing my breeding in Thailand under under uh, government permission and so i'll be able to do a lot of things there and uh, i'm getting a visa i'm getting a job i'm getting a job can you believe that I'm fucking 75 years old and i'm getting a fucking job okay but at least i get paid dude and and then i'm, I'm probably going to have my book published in thai and i'm probably going to be doing a podcast from thailand and i'll be doing a lot of promotional work in thailand thailand also wants to be one of these big producers with the planet you know, there's a big, big market, you know, it, 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 the China, you know, the Chinese, you know, uh, uh, when they hit upon the ganja market, that was their way of making millions. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, 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 you know, what? and, and, and <laughs> if only they would teach the, they would teach these farmers how to grow good weed. If only if they could teach the, they get these farmers to get high. Then we'd get some good weed, you know what I mean? 
but they don't care about getting high. They just want you to want it to look good enough, smell good enough, taste good enough, you know. So yeah, you know, uh, 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 you know. I hate to tell you guys, but our dope was better. <laughs> you know, he, he, he we're. We're, we're, uh, uh, I have a friend of mine in, in, in uh, Pakistan, and he makes a quality of hash that just, may I say, uh, it's not for export quality. It's, it, it's, it's not for, it, it's too good to be exported. It's a super, super, super quality. And that's going to be available on the market. They're doing a new type of, of, of hash making now where they're doing traditional sieving technique, which is the best way to make hash. And then what they're doing is they're doing it electric with electrostatic energy. So the, you know, you usually you get, you get a resin that's like 90% pure, 92%, but you never get it hundred percent pure, right? With the electrostatic energy, it takes that, it takes that, that 8% that you miss out. So you don't miss anything. It's completely pure. And uh, uh, some of that hash you see is unbelievable. Some of the hash uh, uh, tested out in the 60% range, right? I, I tested out over 60% making my, my ice technique, my ice water technique using the same equipment that the original machine uh, uh, was uh, introduced in 1973 in uh, uh 1997 i saw you and that becomes that comes out even pure uh, uh but man the electrostatic stuff is so pure so nice that uh i'm sure that once you get a a good sieving technique method and you get that electrostatic machine you'll start making hash like they had never seen before you know that's the thing about Reinhardt's method. When he created that method, he created a, a, a technique where it collected all the oils and all the resins and put it all back together again. The bags, they, they, they're not porous enough for it to, to, create, to keep 30% they lose. That's the big difference. That, third, that, that 30% is a sticky flavor, taste, terpenes. We, I've got some... Uh, uh, I call it my gula line. It has 27 terpenes. Oh, let me let me just get one and read one to you. I think I have it right here. Let me see. Strains and analysis. Okay. This is this is this is what I consider real medicine. Okay. Okay, this is my C12. My R12. And it has 18.86% uh, THCA. It has THC9, 3.52%. THCV, 0.37%. CBDA, 0.14%. CBDG, CBDA, 49%. CBDG, 11%. 0 0.11. CBC, 0.11. So, and then it has 25 terpenes, right? So this has, oh, this is the, the first level. Uh, 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 this is my, my red dragon, red, red dragon, red Congolese, Nigerian hash plant. And then I have it hit with my, uh, 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 my uh, CBD plant my Malawi CBD plant. So it has a mixture of all these terpenes and all these, all these flavors, all these cannabinoids. <clears throat> and when you taste this weed, immediate, the, the taste overwhelming, the, the pungency overwhelming, the color overwhelming. This is, this is enjoy yourself and have a good time high. I have it on two levels. I have it on this level, and I have it on another level where I recross the these strains back into my Durban poison. So I have them on this level, and then I have them on another level where I have more of a THC kick in there, right? 
and I'm I'm going to be analyzing those. But you see the 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 uh, uh, the analysis. The analysis, like the, this analysis, that may not be the high that you're going in for thirty six percent, thirty percent. But this will get you higher than you've been in a long, long time, dude. It has the full cannabinoid flavor, twenty five terpenes. And then here, here's a, here's one of my strains. This is Joe's Blue Dragon. Uh, it tested, it was six weeks. It, it was tested at six weeks. At six weeks, it was 23.96% cannabinoids. It was 20.50 THC and 2.48 terpenes. This is the best plant that I've had, I've ever owned in my life. And this is still another six weeks away from being finished. And this when this plant is finished, it looks like a fucking snowball. This is stuff you're going to be working with in Thailand? Yeah. No, this is the stuff I'm, I'm working with in Thailand, yeah. I, I What I'm doing with this stuff now is... Uh, Yeah, like, yeah, I have the Red Dragon. It's called Red Dragon Double X, Triple X. So it has a Red Dragon, Red Congolese, Nigerian Ash Blend, OG, and then it has my CBD plant. And this has everything in it, THCV, CBDA. So it's a combination of it all. It has, It's anti-anxiety, antibiotic, anti- uh, 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 Takes away your appetite. It's a, uh, a, a, a takes away. It uh, helps you control your sugar and your appetite, and and helps you and your people who have diabetes too. It's uh, oh, it, this it's a combination of all the wonders of cannabis. It's a it's a three way African cross. So I have ones that are four way African cross. Like I, I have this red dragon. Then recooked into my uh, uh, Durban poison. So this would be red Congolese, Nigerian hash plant, Malawi CBD plant, Durban poison. You know what I mean? So I have it on two two different levels. This is Venice, but the the so in Thailand I'll be able to work uh, 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 real well. Uh, because I have a license and a legal business there. But also my friend's wife, Amon's wife, is a uh, biologist, horticulturalist. And she knows how to do tissue culture and the whole deal. She works for the Pakistani government. We're thinking about bringing her over there and opening up a lab. But we have like 77 outlets uh, 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 under our banner there. So there's going to be a lot of work. So I'm growing up. My, my facility is like a, 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 is probably one of the biggest in the world, indoor and outdoor. Yes. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm bringing Ahmad there. We're bringing people over there and, you know, the ties and everybody. It's a huge operation, huge operation. So, yeah, someone's got to do it. So I guess I'm the one to, Nothing wrong with that. Nothing Dr. That. Green in chat is asking, are these seeds available? The ones that you were talking about, the strains yeah. you were talking about? Yes. Where can they find them? Uh, uh, well, I don't have them on my website now, but if they, they call me at 503-398-6221, if you call me at that number or send an email to the king of the Paul at msn.com with your phone number, I'll send you a menu. You know, and, and then and then we can talk about there because there's some things in there that are completely wonderful. Uh, I call it the Gula line. The Gula is a language that the Africans uh, that were taken as slaves uh, created a language that they could speak to each other to and not have to talk to the slaves that had been there a slave a hundred years. They couldn't be trusted. Right. There was a trust feeling between the slaves that had just gotten there and the slaves that had already been broken in kind of thing, you know, 
So they created their own language called Gula. So I call I create I call this line Gula because it's a two-way, three-way, four-way African cross. You know, and so uh, 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 there's like ten strains, eleven strains. So you have I have them. Uh, oh, I can just tell you right now. I have. Uh, I have a, 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 a red Congo, a Lesotho red stem, Malawi OG, Angola red, black Congolese, Angola, Angola goo, and, uh, and no, Angola, uh, uh, sour goo, red dragon, red Congo, sour goo, red dragon. See, I, I, these are, I have strains at two different levels. I have a really strong strain, and I have a strain that's so strong, that's strong for most people, but I have an even stronger strain. The one that's been re back crossed back into my, my Durban poison. So if he calls me up on those address and those phone numbers, I can I can hook him up with this line. Right now I'm running a big sale going on now, too. I plan on being on a show in, in Albuquerque in uh, May in May, May the 19th and 20th. I'm going to be in Albuquerque, and by that, by then, I should know exactly what my what my uh, 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 program is going to be. Flaviano wants to know: Do you still have uh, the Mohican? Hopefully, I said that right. Uh, Mishwakan. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Now his name is Flav Flavi Flav What's his name? Flaviano. Yeah, I I know him. I talked to him. He he has my number, I think. But he should call the number 503-398-6221 or uh, 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 King of Nepal, MSN.com, N-E-P-A-L, King of N-E-P-A-L. That's a medical line that I've made. But people who get a, like I, I have a sour goo. The sour goo that, that's in here is a really nice one. I have it with with my uh, where is it sour goo okay it's called sgx 10 it's it's the sour goo so this one is like uh, a total cannabinoids is like 12 but it has uh thca thc9 cbda t tcb t CBCG A CBG A G CBC no CBD CBC and and then twenty five terpenes so it has a real real unbelievable quality to it. This one the mother was a four fourteen and a half pounds, but the the then I then I have this same thing but now reintroduced with my Durban poison, so it's much stronger. So you have it on two different, you have it on a party level and you have it on a strength level. And, and real trippy, the strength, the strength level, you know, but again, it, it has, it has THCV in it. Uh, uh, see, it has a combination that you don't find in the wild. The only way that you can get a combination like I'm doing it is if you go into the wild, test the ones that are wild and then put them together and see what you get. <laughs> that's what I did. I, I bred them all. All these are all African strains. That's why I call it my Gula line. So this next batch of testing will bring out the the strains that are that are were were married to the uh, Durban poison. So we'll see how they come out. They're coming out real nice. People who who smoke this weed will tell you right away they've never smoked anything tastier in their life. When they when they when they smoke the weed, they'll say, "Oh, uh, you'll be everybody will be smoking weed in the room, and then you'll break out this weed, and the smell, the aroma, is so outstanding that it's it out it out covers up the other stuff because it, it just the, the 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 aroma is overwhelming. It has twenty five terpenes, 
So, uh, you know, the, the, the aroma and the pungency is overwhelming and the colorization is overwhelming. Like the some of this that that red Congo may be the reddest pot you've ever seen in your life. You know, it's so heavy, it's so red, and it, it it's it, 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 it's you know you, you when 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 people smoke it, the first thing that'll come out of their mouth will be that it was a a pleasure to smoke that. You know what I mean. It's pleasurable to smoke it because it's just so tasty, so looking, so so sweet, so nice that it you know it brings back the days. But yeah, it, it's it's uh, 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 I've got this gula line now. That's the hottest thing. That's the hottest thing on the block because uh, 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 one of the things is that it's anti-anxiety. That's a really big, you know, I, I breed that in all to, into all my drug, all my plants, anti-anxiety. I don't want people to have anxiety. Do you want anxiety? <laughs> no, anxiety is very unpleasant, 100%. What you smoking on there tonight? I'm smoking hash. Nice. Uh, uh, my, my friend gave me an embossed <laughs> I just, I just made this hash. Did you see it? Oh, nice huh? <laughs> nice little golf ball there. Minimal. It's full melt. I made it for my friend. I get half of this, but uh, I'm gonna wait till to smoke it till he gets here. But if if I, I'm running out. I may have to cut that in half tonight. <laughs> <laughs> when you cut this in half, it's like creamy. It's just cream, you know. This stuff is full melt. This other stuff, where is it? Okay, let's see. Oh, here it is. It's full melt, but it's 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 coming to an end. And I got it from my friend in Boston. Boston was a real disappointment. That scene that was there before is not there anymore. You know what I mean? It's like the youngsters, that, they're in college. They want to get out. They want to get out. Uh, uh, they want to get into a new industry. They all want to get into the cannabis industry. I wish that some of them would would learn how to be plumbers. We need We need plumbers, man. We need electricians and 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 house builders. It's a dying breed. We are a dying breed. Yeah. What do you do? I'm a carpenter by trade. Well, really? before growing, yeah, I'm actually getting back into is putting the bags on, going back to work myself a little bit. What, you, what, what kind of carpentry work are you doing? I do finish carpentry is my cup of tea. Uh, well, that's uh trim kitchens, doors, stuff like that. On my own, I can uh, custom build doors, tables, curio cabinets, chairs, shit like that. Hutches, you name it. Hold on a second. I put my air conditioner off. Ooh. Air conditioner, holy shit! No way. How warm is it there in uh, fucking Oklahoma? Yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm getting ready to do a, a show in Albuquerque, and I'm 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 putting some packs of stuff. Uh, 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 there'll be some special deals. I'm selling everything. I'm trying to sell as much as I can off before I leave. So I'm giving everybody 50% off and I'm giving some great deals out. And if you, if you, Fabiano, if he's smart, he would get that Gula line. That Gula line, I'll be famous for that line here one day. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to leaving and going to Thailand. So I'm hoping that happens for me. I hope so too. I hope so too. 
So they were kind of asking, you know, 25 uh, terpenes there. God, can you put it like a, can you put a nose to that for us? Can you kind of describe the smell and taste a little bit? I mean, it's got to be hard with that profile. The, the, the thing about it is, is that the, the pungency is overwhelming. It's stronger than the strong. It, it, it's really unbelievable. But the, 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 uh, it's more tropical than anything else, and and it, it, it's 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 uh it's 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 hold on, what is that? It's it's uh the pungency of it because of, of you know it just has a real pungent, real flavorful taste that you, you may not be used to having that having that taste in your paddle palate for a long time you know what i mean and how it smells it's uh, that that's what it, that, that's what it is it has a combination of all those terpenes you know i'm just beginning to smoke it myself i just finished smoking some you know but uh uh, uh the stuff that's that that's uh, that's uh coming off the table now i'm just going to start to smoke now so i really can't even tell you how great it is you know what i mean I'm just saying that I, I'm getting very good results from that. Now, does it uh, change after a long-term cure there? I, myself, I enjoy my cannabis on the fresher side. You know, I'm weird like that because I like to enjoy them in individual terpene profiles as you're kind of talking about when because it does change you know uh, on the fresher dry not necessarily cured side of cannabis you get you get that different taste on the inhale and exhale you know yeah, what we, i mean to where a cured okay, cannabis okay, it I, kind I of blends a little the, bit the, the, this we uh, the, this has has a super taste out the out of the gate it changes flavor it gets it gets, it gets, uh, you know, you, you, I like my stuff cured, you know what I mean? But I, I, when I got this, I've been smoking it. It's been cured at least like 60 to 90 days. So it came out really nice. I cure everything, but it has that smell, you know, that's just overwhelming. You know, it has an overwhelming odor and over everything about, about it is, is like overwhelming. It's like you know what I mean. It's I I may have overdid it. <laughs> so on, on one level, I think that I did it right because uh, 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 it, it's part. It's good time weed. Have fun weed and stuff. The the strong stuff that's coming off the gate now. I'll have to tell you about it. So what are we talking about on the flowering times? I think Africa, I prefer some reason, think long, long flower. I think nine, 10 weeks. That is not, that's not a long flower by any means, I would say. No, no. no. Nice. Right on. What's a, uh, how she, uh, what's the bud structure like? Does she stack well? Yeah, she stacks nice. Leafy? Uh, some is and some is not. It depends. So that's another thing I'd like to ask you a little bit as a breeder. Uh, how much does that weigh into the final call? Say you get something that's, you know, a bomb, but is a, a, a super pain in the ass to trim. You know what I mean? Is that a plus or a minus? Does it matter? It only matters to you. Yeah, it only matters to you. With these, with these sativas, normally they have really little uh, leaf. You know? The leafing is not that much. I know. But you know, I, I have some Malawis that just have no leaf, you know, very little at all. Yeah. So, when uh, you're going to be able to 
like double dip, if you will, on some of the dreams you had about going back to Nepal. You I'm had. Going, uh, I'm, go, I'm going back to Nepal, and when I go back to Asia, I'll be going back to Nepal. Oh, you'd be going both ways there. Yeah, well, that's the next stop out of Kathmandu is uh, 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 out of Bangkok is Kathmandu. <laughs> I've been I've been to Thailand so many times, literally hundred times or more. Because I lived in Kathmandu, one of the ways out of Kathmandu, out of Kathmandu is to go through Thailand. You either go through Thailand or go through Delhi. In Delhi, you go through London. That's sort of the long way around. It's faster to go through Asia to the States than it is from London to, uh, from here, through London, through Delhi. But I don't know. How, it might be different now. I mean, who knows? It might, you know. I, I really can't. Before I, I was up to that, but now I don't know. I mean, it's, it could be everything's turned around. You know, and things may things. Uh, right now, everybody flies to out of out of uh, what Doha or Bihar? Or what what is that place in the Middle East to get to Asia? To go to the Middle East. I'm not sure. Where I'm used to, when I go to Asia, I think about going through through uh, California, through the Pacific. But but from London, they fly from from London to uh, uh, Dubai, that area there, and then from London to Dubai, and then from Dubai they fly to Bangkok or to India. Were you at the Cannabis Cup in Michigan? I've been to several, yes. God, I, I used to have a good time in Michigan. When it was the Medical Cup, it was great. Oh, we get down here in Michigan. I just went, came back from uh, the Hash Bash Cup. Well, the Hash Bash, I went to the Hash Bash, and then there was a Hash Bash Cup. And uh, it's a three day event in a, in a hotel. And man, they they rocked that shit, man. That hotel was just cut it with a knife, full of cannabis smoke, <laughs> live music from basically mo uh, morning till late night, and uh, it was a pretty good time. It was a really good time. Who's the guy that runs the the uh, the hash bash? The really the guy that started it was uh, John Sinclair. John Sinclair, yeah. He's still alive, right? Yeah, I had an opportunity to uh, meet him over the weekend. And uh, Evan, Ad, he's uh, at some point in the near future going to be on the show, actually, telling his story. So it was, uh, I love the events myself. I love to get out there. He went to jail for a joint. Yeah. Yeah. You know. It was. A, wasn't there long thanks to protests thank you well yeah they're just starting the weather's just breaking here in michigan it's literally like almost every weekend now there's some type of uh camping event three-day camping event or cup pretty much of some kind no so we do love our events all right, buddy. I think it's like I, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I seen the yawns. I knew it was coming. Uh, no, I just, I, I'm getting tired. I've been on here. How long have we been on? A little, about two hours, roughly two hours, maybe a little bit more. But I'm, I'm grateful for the time. I'm grateful for the stories, my friend. Um, I hope people take you up on the offer on your opportunities, grab up some of them uh, genetics. If they're smart, they would give you a call and check some of that stuff out. Uh, before you go, I would like to uh, get that sound bite again. Hopefully you remember how it goes. Uh, basically, if you don't, what I'm asking you for in my version is, hey, this is Eagle, and I'm on fucking Talking Shit with Eagle, episode 803. You can say whatever you want before or after that. This will be a commercial at some you, point. You, you're going to say that, or I'm going to say that? You're going to say that, uh, basically. 
And this is Joe Pietri. I'm on fucking talking shit with Eagle, episode 803. You can say whatever you want. This. I gotta write this down. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Uh. Eight oh three, yes, sir. Uh, you've been on many times. Oh, so yeah, I, I hear talking shit with Eagle, episode eight oh three, Joe Pietri. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much, Joe, for coming on and uh, hanging out with me this evening, giving us all another night to uh, hang out. Uh, hopefully we'll speak to you very soon when uh, you get to Thailand or possibly get back to uh, Nepal, either or. I wish you uh, the best of luck in your new endeavor, my friend. So you want me to go to that intro now? Yeah. Right now, well, let well, me... It's uh... been nice talking shit with Eagle. This is episode 803. This is Joe Pietri. Say Perfect. Ha. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, my friend. Thank you. I'll be back. We'll we'll talk before I go to Thailand, I'm sure. Right on. Right on. Thank you. Thank you. For the rest of you guys, thank you for tuning in to this great episode, 803. You guys give me a couple hours to take care of some stuff. I will see you, let's see here, around midnight-ish in the weed nerd world if you want. Please join me then. If not, please remember to do something nice for somebody. Random acts of kindness do save lives. With that being said, I'll see you guys in a little while. Take care. Fill your trays. I'll be back.